In this video, I'm going to go over Homedell Football's preseason strength conditioning program. This is part three in the series that I put out. Part one covers the early off season, which is the winter, and the late off season, which is the spring. So at this point in the year, all of the sports, the other sports that kids are playing are now over. School ends and it is the summertime. So I have access to all the athletes. Um, practice starts up with the actual football team, but they are less intense practices. It's primarily just going over plays. It's non-contact. There's no equipment, uh, a lot of it's insulation type stuff, but having said that, it is still four days a week of probably, I don't, you know, I'd estimate about an hour and a half or so of physical activity that they're now doing. And I have to take into account the fact that they're doing that and kind of mirror what they're doing in the weight room as far as running and conditioning and make sure that everything balances out and they're not getting overtrained or getting too beat up. So, like I said, the spring season ends and I get all the athletes back. I'm gonna test them and do an assessment I'll take their one rep hand clean, back squat, bench press, chin up test, broad jump, body weight, assess and see the, the athletes, what progress they made during the spring. If kids were playing a spring sport, see if, if, they're, if they are where they should be, if they lost anything, and then you kind of hold them accountable and say, hey, here we go. We got about 10, 12 weeks for you to get back in shape before the season starts or get in better shape. You know, let's get after it. So due to the fact that we're gonna go on a lower volume program when you go in season, it's not gonna be as nearly as demanding Okay, we're not going to do any traditional hypertrophy type stuff for the next four or five months or so, which is higher rep training because it's going to accumulate a lot of fatigue and you get beat up, but it's great for helping you put on muscle mass. So I'm going to do a little bit of hypertrophy training in June because you're going to go four or five months without doing any of it. And when you're a beginner lifter or a new lifter, the easiest way to get stronger is putting more muscle mass on your frame. So if we know we're not going to do that for four or five months, I'm going to put in a little bit before we, we go into the next four or five months of developing your strength and power. But the primary goal for block one is strength, with a little hypertrophy emphasis. For July, it's developing your strength as well as your power and explosiveness. And then we go to block three, which is camp. It's more about maintenance of your strength and your power because we're playing so much football now. Okay, as far as our practice schedule, it's four days a week, four days a week, lower intensity type stuff, and then camp goes up to six days a week. We got scrimmages, you got live hitting, uh, much longer duration of practice, so it's basically more taxing. The duration of each block is, a, is about a month. So four weeks, three weeks of hard training plus a deload, four weeks, three weeks of hard training plus a deload, and then four weeks, no deload because the amount of time I have with the athletes during camp is substantially reduced because they're playing so much football, they got meetings and all stuff of that nature that they're not accumulating too much fatigue from the weight room that I need to actually incorporate a deload. We're gonna train just around a maintenance volume or a much lower amount of volume. And that leads me to what I'm gonna talk about next. So frequency, they're going four days a week, four days a week, we go to August, it drops to three days a week. We're gonna reduce how much they're training because their football practicing is going up. Um, we follow an upper lower body split for the four days a week, and then for three days, it's upper lower and a full body day. We're gonna follow a high low model. So higher intensity days are stacked with lower, uh, or alternated with lower intensity days. So say offensive practices are a little bit more taxing. They're gonna train their lower body and they're gonna do their hard running or conditioning all on the same day. And then they'll have a defensive practice, which is more uh, installation oriented, so maybe some lower intensity running and some upper body training to take a day off and then they'll repeat the process. This prevents them from getting overtrained and beat up. So you kind of stack their harder days with their lighter days. Okay, so as far as volume, moderate volume, moderate volume, low volume. Again, as practice goes up, what we do in the weight room has to go down. About the minimal effective volume, minimal effective volume and the maintenance volume. So for your bench presses and your squats, say eight to 10 sets of presses, pulls, squats, in the maintenance volume as or minimal effective volume, the minimal amount of training you can do and make progress, but not but anything less than that, it's really more maintenance, which is where we are here, six to eight sets for those uh, lifts. Anything more than that, you're gonna accumulate too much fatigue, you're gonna be beat up, and it's gonna be hard to really practice and be efficient, which is really the primary emphasis of playing football, is being able to practice and compete and play football itself, not lifting. The load on the bar, I'd say moderate to high. This goes back down to about moderate, I don't go super, super, super light. And the reason being is because if you go really, really light and then you start changing up what they're doing, um, it's really hard to incorporate those movements back when the season comes around week one. You don't want to elicit any new uh, soreness or fatigue because you're reincorporating squat patterns and bench press patterns. So all I do is I pick variations of those lifts that are a little bit less taxing. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but the same thing. We'll train a little bit further away from failure. So more of a moderate intensity, lower intensity, but you know, how, what load is on, on the bar, it really depends day to day. 
we'll use um, reps and reserve or rating of perceived exertion to kind of manage the load, but a little bit lower than the previous block, but not so low that you're actually gonna atrophy and get any reduction in um, strength or power explosiveness. So as far as our reps, our core lifts, aside from our Olympic lifts, like benches and squats, four to six reps, three to five reps, and then three to five reps, as far as like our um, loading scheme, they're either ascending sets, so start lighter and work your way up to your heaviest set, or they're straight sets, the same weight all the way across. Um, plyometrics, moderate amount, higher amount, and we go back to lower amount because we're playing more football, we have to reduce them. I get athletes that are coming back from playing spring sports that maybe haven't been doing many plyometrics, so this is more remedial, basic, uh, going over mechanics again, progressing them to doing more continuous or multi-directional type stuff, depending on the facility, depending on what I have access to, what equipment I have access to, how many I'm training at a time, you gotta be creative, but that's just a general outline of what I'm doing. Like I said, the practice schedule, four days, four days to six days, lower intensity, lower intensity, substantially more demanding when camp comes around. Speed and agility, we're doing very little in June and July because that's what practice is. If you're gonna play for an hour and a half of football, kind of going over your footwork, doing whatever specific to your position that you're playing, that should cover most of your speed and agility type stuff. As far as conditioning, we will condition them three days a week in June and July, and then down to two, three different days. One day is more sprint oriented with minimal rest periods. Another day is a 60 yard shuttle, repeated a couple times, a little bit of an intermission, and then a, a repeated series type. And then we did extensive tempo runs as we did last year, and a little bit of the year before that. One of the coaches at Holmdale has, has a background strength and conditioning, so we give his input and give some really good input as far as that end. And we made sure that they're taken care of between the football staff and myself after practice. So three days of conditioning, two higher intensity days, one lower intensity days. Again, those higher intensity days are on the days that they're doing hard lifting, the lower intensity days on the day of their upper body, their defensive practice to consolidate stress. When we go to August, it goes to two days a week. We get rid of the tempo runs because they're getting more than enough conditioning from playing six days a week. But uh, again, it's reduced, but we still gotta get some in to complement what they're doing as far as practice. And for the most part, that's it. I'm gonna go over a couple keys to wrap it up. So the biggest takeaway is that one is football. This is what this has been preparing for, is for the season. Practice and games, that is the priority. What we do in the weight room is supposed to complement that. If I train them too hard here, if I train them too hard in the weight room and run them too much, we ask them to actually practice and play their sport, they're gonna be so beat up that they're not gonna perform optimally. So it's really important to reflect on the fact that in the early off season or the late off season, there's a high prevalence for physical development. As we get closer to the preseason and go in season, it's gonna kind of flip and the actual sport practice is gonna take a much higher prevalence. So camp is really under the umbrella of in season because it's so physically demanding because they're playing so much, but for the model that I put together, it's under the umbrella of preseason. Uh, for this demonstration or for this video. Some of the things that I do for camp, I'll substitute out um, back squats with belt squats or box squats. I'll pick less demanding variations. Again, I'll train further away from failure, lower volume, lower frequency because they're playing so much football. But again, when the season comes around and camp ends, you don't want to completely have strayed too far away from those movements because if you start incorporating them again, week one of the season, they're gonna be sore, they're gonna beat up, be, they're gonna be sore, beat up, tired week one of the season, we're opening day, it's gonna be a disaster. So you gotta kinda of keep similar movement patterns in there. Um, football is the priority, like I said. The preseason is gonna set up a successful in-season. A lot of times kids kinda of stop training, they stop eating, stop taking care of themselves when August comes around. You have to understand this is really important. If you wanna have a good season, you gotta have a really good preseason. You have to understand that flexibility is really important. Um, there's always meetings, there's uh, changes in the schedule, there's other teams at the facilities as far as like, you know, uh, what I have access to as far as court access, as far as schedule with the weight room. Um, pra scrimmages always change last minute a lot of times. There can be some, some uh, adjustments due to weather and stuff. So you gotta be flexible, you gotta kinda make adjustments on the fly. And the big takeaway here, one would be maintaining your body weight. We have a reduction in the amount of training that you're doing, but if you train the minimal effective volume and you, and you push yourself, but stay a little bit further away from failure and follow the program as it's designed, and you eat and maintain your body weight and have a successful off season to get into this, you're gonna maintain a lot of strength, a lot of explosiveness, which is what you want. You don't wanna peak going into the season, you wanna peak at the end of the season when the playoffs come around, when the championships come around. So maintaining your body weight is huge. 
Adequate hydration status is also huge. I'll have another video up on that if I haven't already posted it. Um, and again, all this training is gonna complement practice. You can't overtrain your athletes in the weight room when they're running because then you're gonna get nothing out of them when they're actually practicing and that's what's gonna carry over most to being successful on the football field. And the last thing is when the in-season comes around, you have to keep training, keep pushing yourself. If you are injured, train around injuries, figure out a way to get better or do the best that you can. So this, uh, this is pretty much it for our preseason program. I will put up a video, part four of our in-season program for opening day through the playoffs. So um, hopefully check that out when it comes out and thanks for watching.